Hello and welcome to a brief guide on kiting the Soul Feast attack, hereafter referred to as Hands, during the Demos fight, who is the fourth and final boss of the fourth raid wing, Bastion the Penitent. This guide is just focusing on the hand kite role. If you want to learn the boss as a whole, check out the resources I have down in the description. There are several different builds that can do this role. The most common builds are hand kite spellbreaker, hand kite soul beast, and hand kite herald. You can find all of these builds down in the description. I'm going to mostly focus on this fight from the perspective of a herald, but the general idea stays the same no matter which build you use. You are just using different skills and have different traits and utility. A few seconds after Demos appears, he will start summoning hands on the person who is the furthest away from him. Typically, the group will be positioned on one end of the arena, while the hand kiter is positioned on the opposite end. Most of the time, the tank will move Demos around the southwestern edge of the arena, while the hand kiter will be on the northeastern edge, on the opposite side. While this is what most groups do, some other groups like to do things differently, so it's sometimes suggested to double check where the tank is going to be and where you should be when you are in a new group. As Demo spawns hands, he will spawn 5 stacks of hands in one cast, each one spawning in a 1 second interval. So the total cast time of this attack is 5 seconds for the total of 5 stacks of hands. The hands will appear on the ground underneath the person furthest away and deal devastating damage to anyone standing on them. One stack of hands won't do too much damage to you, but a total of 5 stacks will obliterate you if you're standing on that spot. With the hands appearing on the platform, they take up space, so while the hands deal a ton of damage to you, you want to do your best to stand in one spot in order to have 5 stacks of hands spawned in the same exact spot. If you move around before all 5 stacks are spawned on the platform, you are going to be taking up more space of the arena, which can be problematic for the rest of the group. Now if standing in multiple hands will blow you up, how are you supposed to stack 5 on top of each other? That's where your build comes in. Each build used for hand kiting is hand selected to allow you to survive through the damage that the hands do to you. Focusing on hand kite herald, which is what I believe is generally recommended for new players, we see three skills used here. Warding Rift, Crystal Hibernation, and Facet of Light. Warding Rift is your staff 3 skill, which will block incoming attacks for 2 seconds. You can move around while using the skill. Crystal Hibernation is your Shield 5 skill, which will block incoming attacks for 3 seconds, and you cannot move around while using the skill. And finally, Facet of Light is your Drag and Heal skill. When you use it, you can use Infused Light, which will convert all incoming damage into healing for you. You can use this while you move around, but remember that you have to use Facet of Light in order to use Infused Light. When you look at the hands, we will mostly ignore hibernation for now and save it for a mechanic I'll mention in a moment. But if you notice with both our warding rift skills and facet of light, they will only protect us for 2 and 3 seconds respectively. As I mentioned before, the hands will deal damage for each stack that is on the ground. So when you are standing in 1 or 2 stacks, you will only be taking some damage. So you can sit through the first 2 or 3 pulses of hands appearing under you, and then you can use these skills to block the damage as the rest of the stacks appear on you but you need to be exceptionally careful that you are not standing on all 5 stacks as the skill finishes, or it will have been for nothing and you'll get blown up. Similarly, it's also important, but less important, to stay in the same spot until all 5 stacks are down on the ground, and then move away. If you need to make the decision to move away after 4 stacks are down because you think you messed up the timing, it's okay to do so. As you practice, you will get the timing down better and improve. There is another major mechanic that the hand cutter needs to be careful of, and that is Mind Crush. Demos will use Mind Crush starting at 90% health and every 35 to 40 seconds after, which will be marked by an animation and saw yelling, Stand in the ward! Quickly! As the hand kiter, you cannot stand in the ward. As such, you will want to use one of your defensive skills to block Mind Crush. Most heralds will save Crystal Hibernation for this and will never use it while stacking the hands in order to make sure it's saved. You can use any of the three skills for hands or any of the three skills for Mind Crush. Make sure you always have at least one available to use when Mind Crush happens. So a quick summary here, a few seconds after Demo spawns, he will cast hands on the person furthest away from him. The hand skill will last for 5 seconds and he spawns one stack of hands each second. Your goal is to stack all the hands on top of each other, where you will stand still as the first couple of pulses of hands spawn, and then you use a defensive skill to survive through the last few pulses while moving out before your defensive skill ends. When Demos uses Mind Crush, just block it with one of your defensive skills and then continue doing this until the boss reaches a 0% health. Some tips and notes for you. There is more to your build than just the defensive skills and your heal. You have some dodges, utility, and other boons that you can give to yourself. When Demos reaches 10% health, your job is not over. You need to go to the opposite side of the arena from where Demos is when you and your group are teleported. 
Hand kiting is kind of a game within a game, and your job doesn't really require communication with the rest of your team. There are some different ways people like to approach hand kiting. One way is to leave the voice call with the rest of your team during this boss so you can just focus on hand kiting. Another is to do that and listen to music that helps you focus. Another is to leave the call and have a metronome playing which can help you time things. And then there are many other different things that you could potentially do to help you with timing hands. Just do whatever is best for you. Don't be afraid to go full tank mode on this build. A lot of more experienced players won't run a lot of toughness so the tank doesn't have to, but if you and your group are newer, feel free to stack some toughness as long as the tank has more than you. If you're new to this, you don't need to stress about making sure all five hands are on top of each other. It is just a goal that you should be working towards and achieve if you want to consider yourself an experienced hand kiter. The hands will be pulled into Demos every 25%, buffing him for each hand that reaches him. This is one of the reasons why the tank has Demos so far away from you. But that means every 25% health, you will have a clear slate to work with. This was a short guide explaining how to hand kite during Demos. I hope this helped you. If you are an experienced hand kiter and have some other tips, feel free to leave them down in the description so we can all learn more. Have a good one everyone.